What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at Windows running on the Steam Deck. It's no secret that Valve recently released some drivers for the Steam Deck. We've got the Wi-Fi drivers, Bluetooth, and GPU, so we've got a pretty functional Windows system here. Unfortunately, at the time of making this video, there are no audio drivers, but you can always use Bluetooth or a USB adapter. I personally just use the little Bluetooth speaker. But before we get started here, I do want to mention that it's really early for Windows on the Steam Deck. Overall, I've actually had a pretty decent experience, minus, you know, no audio coming out of the built-in speakers. And one other issue I've run into is for non-Steam games, the built-in controls need to be mapped, and it's about 80% of the games that I tested that are non-Steam games. But overall, it's been a pretty decent experience. As you can see, the trackpads are working here. We've got our left click and right click using our trigger buttons, but, you know, personally, I'd rather just go ahead and plug in a mouse for this video here. When it comes to the Steam Deck, we're working with a custom Ryzen APU. It's based on Zen 2 with a max boost up to 3.5. We've got four cores and eight threads, but we have the new RDNA 2 iGPU built in here with eight CUs. And one of the big reasons this is actually performing really well is the RAM. It's got 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5 running at 5,500 megahertz. So in this video, we're going to test out some PC games. I also want to run some benchmarks. And overall, I just want to kind of take a look at how Windows performs. We're also going to test out some 4K video playback from YouTube and things like that. But, uh, you know, instead of filming the screen here, I'm going to plug it into my game capture. When we move over to some PC gaming, I will film the screen so you can see it's really running on the Steam Deck. But there are some things I want to show you here, and it'll just be much easier if I'm able to capture this screen. Alright, so here it is. Windows is really snappy here, and I kind of expected it to be with the correct drivers. After all, it's just an x86 PC in a handheld form factor. When it comes to these mobile APUs, they can definitely benefit by upping the TDP. Unfortunately, right now we're kind of stuck at 15 to 16 watts with this unit, and it's great for battery life. I mean, that's really how Valve wanted this thing to run. Inside of the BIOS, we can only go up to 15. Now, there are third-party applications on the market, and in the future, actually very soon, we will be able to change this like Power Control Panel from Project SBC over here on YouTube. He's put out a few updates, and this should be working soon on the Steam Deck. And once we can get that TDP up, I will do some more testing, because if we could set this to 25, because right now we're only at 15. I'll give you a look real quick. Just running Prime 95 in the background. With Core Temp here, we're sitting at 16. And even if I put a load on that GPU... When we're maxing out the CPU side of things, our GPU clock is going to be down. This should go up to 1600 megahertz. And at around 25 to 30 watts, which I'd say would be acceptable in kind of dock mode, we can expect a big performance jump with the Steam Deck and Windows. But right now, until we can control that TDP, this unit is only running at about 15 watts. And at 15 watts, we're seeing some really great performance. So like I mentioned, the first thing I wanted to do was show off a little bit of 4K video playback. I'm going to connect this to my 4K monitor and see what we can do. So to tell you the truth, I wasn't even sure if we could do 4K video out. I'm using an adapter I have here. This is kind of a hub, got everything we need, USB Type-C to HDMI, USB Type-C, Ethernet, everything, and it does work with the Steam Deck. So in just a second, it will populate on the external display. It's going to be the same resolution as the built-in screen on the Steam Deck, so I will need to go into Settings, but from here, we can just show on the second monitor and we can swap it over to 4K. So this will do 4K out of that USB Type-C port. When I do 4K video testing on these little PCs, I always like to turn scaling completely off. That way we have none of it going on. Everything's going to look really small here, but we're at a true 4K60 on this monitor out of USB Type-C on the Steam Deck. So here we have a 4K 60fps video on YouTube. And by the end of this video, I only had 8 drop frames. I suspected that the hardware here could definitely handle 4K video playback quite well. And since we have the ability to connect this to an external monitor, I mean, this could be something you might want to try out. Next thing I want to take a look at are some benchmarks. And the first one here is Geekbench 5, single core, 883, multi, 3709. This is definitely on par with the 3700U when it comes to single and multi-core performance. We have 3 d Mark Night Raid, total score 16,126, Firestrike, a pretty impressive 4,340 for integrated graphics, and finally we have Time Spy, and we got a 1,722. Keep in mind that the Steam Deck is running at 15 watts right now. 
I've tested a lot of APUs and other CPUs with integrated graphics on the channel. Number two on the list is the Ryzen 5700G. This is a desktop variant with Vega 8 graphics. The best time spy score I could get out of that while overclocking the CPU and GPU was 1800 and that's pulling up to 140 watts. Next on the list we have the Intel i7-1195G7 running at about 40 watts with a 1916. And finally, the most powerful little mobile APU that I've tested so far, the Ryzen 9 6900HS. This has the new RDNA 2 680M graphics built in, and this was running at 45 watts. We got a 2649. So this little APU isn't doing bad at all for this 15 watt TDP. Now it's time to move over to some gaming on the Steam Deck while running Windows. And first up, we have Forza Horizon 5. I don't own this on Steam, so I'm using the Game Pass version of it. We're at 1280 by 800 low settings and I'm getting an average of 78 FPS. We definitely have some wiggle room here so we can change some of these settings up to medium, but high at 60 is kind of a no-go even at 1280 by 800 at least at that 15 watt TDP. But I still wanted to see if we could run this at high settings with a cap of 30 set and it's totally possible. So here it is, high settings 1280 by 800 with that 30 FPS cap on. It's going to run at 30 all day and it's not that bad. Personally, I would rather play this at 60, so going down to low settings, maybe a low-medium mix, is going to be the way to go. Next up, we have Halo Infinite, 1280 by 800, and I knew we weren't going to get a constant 60 out of this, but I did get an average of 38 FPS. And again, you can actually cap this game at 30 and have a really good time with it. Unfortunately, I couldn't capture the sound because my Bluetooth audio messed up when I started the game and I just really didn't want to go back and do anything about it. Dirt 5 is another one I always like to test on these APUs, 1280 by 800 and we can't quite hit that 60. If you go down to the lowest settings I'm sure we could do it, but right now we're getting an average of 58 FPS, which if I didn't have that frame counter on, I could still play this just fine. And finally, we have Fortnite because we're running Windows and we can install the Epic Game Store. Had a lot of people asking about this. I'm in performance mode, medium settings, and this is definitely playable. If I was in the city, we'd actually have an average of around 82 FPS out of this game. So this is something I know a lot of people aren't going to do, but I still wanted to test it out. Here we have the original Skyrim, low settings, 4K. Now at medium settings, I get an average of around 48. At low settings, it's so close to being a constant 60 at 4K. And since I've got everything plugged in, I figured I'd test at least one game at 1080p on an external monitor. Forza Horizon 5 1080p low settings with resolution scale set to performance. I do have the frame lock set to 60 and I was really hoping we could run this at a constant 60 1080p, but it looks like 900p would be the way to go, at least at 15 watts. I think if we could bring this up to 20 or 25, we could get 60 out of it at 1080p. So overall, when it comes to Windows on the Steam Deck, it's still a bit early. I know we can pull a lot more performance out of this if we could tweak that TDP, but we're only set at 15 watts. These drivers will be updated down the road, we will get sound working on the built-in speakers, and you know, if you do want to run Windows and dual boot SteamOS, then in the future this is going to be perfectly capable of doing it. But you know, after using SteamOS 3.0 on the Steam Deck, it's just so easy to use. It really is like a console experience right out of the box. 
But personally, I'd like to see how far we could take Windows on the Steam Deck in the future. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. I will have more Steam Deck videos coming up. There's a lot of stuff that I want to test. I got a full emulation video in the works right now. And if you're interested in seeing more, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell icon so you get notified when I post a new video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.